semi stand at Embedded World in 22. And here I'm talking to Aunt, and we're talking about single pair Ethernet. So here you've got an SPE demo. It's 10 base T1S. Can you tell me a little bit more about what you've got going on here? Yes, I can. Um, so this is the first time we're showing this to the audience, so we're just going live with it. Um, so we're very excited to excited to share that good news here. So what we have is a Mac and Phi device. It's a four by four millimeter device uh, integrating the the Phi layer and the Mac layer in a single device. Okay. Uh, we're following the Open Alliance protocol for the SPI protocol to talk to hosts. What you see here on the booth is we yep. have a setup using Raspberry Pis and we play a super Tuxcat game over over that actually okay, line. Yep. Um, so the standard talks about around about a distance of 25 meters to cover. Yes. Um, we're showing that we can cover 65 here. So, so this is 65 meters. Yeah, so there's an electrical connection between these two connectors, and these are like 15 meter wires. I have another one right. uh, ah, in the cabinet okay. down there, so we're coming up with 15 meters, 15 meters, 15 meters, 15, and another three here. So we cover around about 65 meter in total length. Okay. And the reason why we can do this, number one, is um, we're taking use of the optional feature that the IEEE defined, which is called PLCA, Physical Layer Collision Avoidance, right. that allows you basically. Uh, when you have a bus system um, like T1S is, um, where you have more than one transceiver talking on the same physical wire, eventually you can, co you can create a collision when you have two, two stations uh, working at the same time. So classic Ethernet at back at the time, you know, 1980s around, that's when the CSMACD yeah. system was, was invented. Um, they use that CSMACD, which is basically saying it's detecting a collision and then all the stations back off and they wait. Uh -huh. And then... At a random at a random interval, one tries to send again. If the bus is still blocked, they wait again for a longer time, and they keep doing this, and eventually they give up. What that basically creates, if you go to you know net network utilization of around of about 30 percent or higher, you start seeing that you have issues not not being able to send all your packets. Physical layer collision avoidance um, solves that problem by doing a round robin arbitration. So every station. Um, this actually, in this case, this is this is the so-called head node that creates a beacon, and basically that tells every every station here that the, the new PLC LS cycle starts, and then it, it passes transmit opportunities. Um, every time a station grabs its own transmit opportunity, is allowed to send exactly one packet, mm -hmm. and then it has to pass it on. So this way, there cannot be any 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 um, collisions on the network at all. Um, and, and the other feature we have here, which is unique to our solution, is what we call enhanced noise immunity. That allows us to communicate at very, very high noise levels, above, above 500 millivolts, where the actual signal is 100, uh, with 1,000 millivolts peak to peak. So we can actually communicate with a data eye almost closed. Um, and then we have another feature that we call um, collision masking. So you could have you have to imagine when when you are in a PLCA network if everything's con, con, uh, configured correctly you cannot have collisions so you don't have to look at the collisions anymore that's going to help us to extend the range um, so even even a lot, easier, a, lot easy, a lot easier and then we have very very low uh, pin capacitance on the devices which is which allows us to go up to around about 40 nodes on a 25 meter line which which helps customers reducing the amount of wiring to the extreme yeah. right yeah. we're thinking this solution, um, especially for like in cabinet installations, will save customers around about 70% of the wiring effort yeah. and the maintenance effort as well. Yeah. So to demonstrate this, we came up with this tiny little game. Um, we have created, just to, to show you how, uh, how effective the actual PLCA is, we're running a, a base uh, utilization of around 80% on the network, right. um, which is something that CSMACD couldn't even handle at that point. Yeah. So we're basically sending two megabits from this to this, two from this to this, two from this to this, and another two back here. So that's creating a total of eight megabits, of, yeah. of uh, which is independent of the game. So the game runs in parallel. So even we could still we could still play the game, and we uh, let me see. And we have basically we're copying the data from here to here, and we could still see the cards moving when when while I control this. Oh, the, I like the shape. The, the AI, you, have, you see the Scottish flag somewhere, actually. Yeah. Uh, let me backwards, no, somewhere, there it is, there it is, yes. right? So you can see, like, when I do this, you can see this moving here, right? Uh, um, yes. 
another I thing. I tell you, you can, what, I'm not getting in a car with you. You don't want to. You look at, look at this. Driver. You don't. You don't want this. Yeah. So another thing we're showing. So this is a Raspberry Pi setup. Right? Yep. Customers can order these boards. Um, we're not selling the Raspberry Pis for an obvious reason. Yep. Um, but you can order, this is a kit, and that probably that typically gets you going. So all you have to do is you take your own Raspberry Pi, you plug this together, provide power to it. So you can power this from here, anything between 8 and 28 volts. Uh, that passes 5 volts down to the Raspberry Pi, 3.3 volts to this board, yep. gets you going. Uh, we have a uh, we have a demonstration software that people can download from our webpage. Uh, I think the source code would be available as well. That gives them an idea how to do this. Uh, so basically, customer can reassemble that setup. Yeah. Right. Um, to show that it's that's working with something that has less power than a Raspberry Pi 3, we came up with this one here. This is a, an RSL10 device, our ARM yeah. Cortex M3 Bluetooth and Bluetooth LE radio. Yeah. So we used that demo board. That's basically the same board here. Um, and we've implemented a driver over free RTOS. Um, so we can ping this device. It's, I cannot show this right now, but we can yeah. ping this device over the 65 meters and it will respond. Wow. That's, that's truly amazing. That's yeah. really good. That's all I can show you. Well, that's quite impressive. So thank you very much. Thank you very much.